Welcome, I am Brother Fluffy, and this is Dreadnought. Dreadnought is a combat space sim uh, developed by Jaeger Development and published by Greybox. Uh, it's been out, uh, well, about a couple months now, and just wanted to go ahead and take a look at it. I uh, just exited the beta in December of last year, so December 2017. And just want to go ahead and take a look at it. It's uh, free to play. Uh, link will obviously be in the description below. But it is, uh, it's a flight sim, but it's, uh, kind of like an arena shooter, uh, where you have different classes, and then you kind of all pile into the same area, and have to achieve certain objectives. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and run through the hangar at Sinley, Sinley Bay Station here. Uh, the different classes of ships, uh, things you can do with the ships, and then, uh, we'll take it out and have, uh, have ourselves a good old-fashioned slugging match here. And so we're going to start here with uh, my ship, the Trafalgar class destroyer. Uh, destroyers are kind of a jack of all trades. They're uh, a little bit more they're, they're a little bit more maneuverable. They can they can get out there. Uh, they especially uh, they can go up close toe to toe against most other ships. Uh, again, except uh, dreadnoughts. Dreadnoughts will pretty much hammer them into the dirt fairly rapidly. Uh, their primary weapon are these large repeater cannons you see all over the ship here. And then for close-in, they have flak turrets, which can shoot down missiles or do some serious up-close shotgun-like spread damage to, uh, to enemy ships. Uh, <clears throat> next class is we have our Dreadnought, you know, who, which the na game is named for. Uh, these are the kings of the battlefield. These are the, uh, they're slow but they pack a lot of armor and a pretty heavy long-range punch. Uh, they have also have equipped with missiles and uh, anti-missile lasers, so they can actually shoot down incoming torpedoes and missiles. They can also have warp jump, which is a short-range jump. Uh, think of it as a short uh, teleportation across the battlefield in case you get stuck out and need to move somewhere real quick. Our next uh, vessel is going to be the artillery cruisers. Uh, these guys are like snipers. Basically, they're a gun with engines on it. I mean, literally, as you can see, there, that's a massive rail cannon engine, and then the control module off there on the starboard side. So, yeah, uh, just pretty much uh, just a giant gun. It's a bit of a glass cannon. It can't take too much punishment, but it does. Uh, it's got a very slender profile. Uh, especially if you're looking at it head-on, it's very hard to hit with all of your guns. And it does have a cloaking device, as you can see here, so if it doesn't move, it can cloak. But if you hit it, if it takes damage or it starts moving, then it go ahead, then it starts taking damage. And then we have our tactical cruisers, which is the healer class, basically. Uh, they, all these little green turret shoot green healy beams. To uh, to heal the uh, the uh, your your friends there, um, a couple of these can actually be really good in keeping up just about anyone under a, even a withering amount of fire. Uh, if you're ever playing a game, and if you can take these guys out first, otherwise you're gonna have a heck of a hard time, and they'll you'll probably lose. And then last we have our Corvette, the fifth class here. Uh, these are the smallest, most lightly armored uh, ships in the game, but they are also the fastest and pack quite a wallop. Uh, but as you can see here, a lot of the in uh, weaponry is front-mounted, as you can see by the four giant Gatling cannons here. And uh, it's got an afterburner, so this thing can really book it if it has to. Uh, they're fast, they're annoying, uh, but they can get the job done. Uh, as you can see here, these these all kind of have their own hard counters and weaknesses. Like the Corvette is good; it's fast, but against uh, ships like the Destroyer here, uh, up against the Destroyer, uh, once it gets too close, the Destroyer is just going to open up with their flak guns and just shred that thing. Um, the Destroyer is pretty good against you know Corvettes and assisting other vessels and taking down larger ships, also artillery cruisers. But up against a dreadnought, this thing is going to get splattered into a fine paste. Uh, artillery uh, shots are, are excellent at long range, but again, if you can close the distance with them or bring heavier firepower to bear, then 
they're done. Uh, attack cruisers heal everybody, so it's in their own best interest to be kept alive, but on the other hand, they're a tad squishy. Alright, so now that we've got the uh, classes out of the way, we're going to take a look at the customization options here. Uh, this is actually the second in the tech tree. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the tech tree here for the different ships. Uh, we have three different companies that have three different uh, that have different tech trees here. Uh, I'm going with Jupiter Arms for my destroyer because I like the way it looks. You also have a Kula Vector, which has kind of a uh, it's got a very rounded green like uh, Zentradi from Metros or uh, Zeon ships from Mobile Suit Gundam. Where it's got that green with the uh, the rounded edges there, um, as you can see here on its destroyers. You know, like I said, very Zentradi, very very kind of anime bad guy kind of look there. And then Oberon, which are really kind of futuristic-y, You know, um, these are kind of the the what you might expect to see, and then like the more fantastical sci-fi elements here. Um, Mithras. Yeah, the Invictus here. A lot smoother lines. Um, blinky lights, because everyone loves blinky lights. All right, gonna go back to mine. But as you can see here, as you research stuff, uh, you unlock different uh, different classes. Now, you can buy ships. You can buy ships. You can't buy the top tier ships, though. You can't buy the top tier ships, so it's not like you can just, you know, drop down uh, like a couple hundred bucks and like, oh yeah, I get all the stuff uh, from hero ships. Now, hero ships do more earn more XP per battle, uh, and they get exclusive vanity items like uh, the Hanuman here has a monkey head for the prow, which... I don't know. Just not really feeling. Um, but you, as you do research, and I'll show you here, uh, I'm click on that, each weapon can be upgraded. Oh, except your primary weapon, which always starts at your ship level. So the original uh, destroyer had repeater turrets 1. This one is a tier 2 ship, so it has repeater turrets 2. Uh, Obviously, the next one's going to repeat a turret 3. Then you click on this. shows you all this. These are my flak turrets. It zooms in on the weapon. Now, you know. here's some basic stuff you should already know, but I guess I should remind you. Battleships come with four different modules as standard. Primary, secondary, internal, and perimeter. Thanks, Bix. Anywho, these are uh, missiles. These are long range. Uh, you use these uh, to basically whittle away at the enemy from longer distances. Primary uh, modules define your combat style. Secondary modules add another layer of complexity that can be exploited by good captains. Thank you, Bix. Uh, torpedoes. Don't know why he's suddenly telling me all this now. I already read through the tutorial. Uh, but torpedoes are a heavier war warhead load, but they're shorter damage, and you get less torpedoes. So you get six missiles, four torpedoes. Um, then you get auto guns, which are perimeter defense. Basically, these things are just flat cannons that will shred anything around you. And then there's your internal module. They generally enhance movement and weapons, giving you the edge in critical moments. I know that voice hacker. But in this case, it resets, it uh, reduces the cooldown on all your weapons by 40 seconds. So, if you really need to fire torpedoes again, or if you're just trying to bring somebody down, uh, that is the best way to do it. Um, so that's research, and then you get research, and da 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 you hit the research button, and it shows you all the stuff you can research. Now, what gets you the research is the XP, which is this number up here at the top in white, with a little white triangle. Um, right now, I can't afford to research anything. I can research a ballista artillery cruiser, but eh, I don't want to. <clears throat> because I don't want to waste that uh, thousand XP on something I'm not going to play. I'm just not an artillery cruiser kind of guy. Um, but the next one, you know, as you research these, um, we'll go and click on that. You research it, and then you can research that. And you can use this uh, free XP to help research stuff. 
and then you can and then purchase it. So what I'm gonna do here is we're actually gonna go ahead and upgrade. Let's go ahead and upgrade the missiles, and we'll go ahead and upgrade the missiles here. And we're gonna use the free XP because we get a lot of free XP from completing battles and uh, objectives. So we're gonna complete that. Ooh. And then we're gonna buy it with credits. Going to be by the credits. Boom. So now we've increased uh, the amount of damage, the number of missiles, and the cooldown time. So we can fire more missiles that hit harder and quicker. So we're gonna go, and go back. And I said we're gonna go back. Thank you. Alright, and then if we go ahead and look at the tech tree, and how this all works out is, let's say, let's take a look at the next destroyer, the Otronto class. And I want it down here, oh, I'd like to buy it, but I can't, because I've only met two out of eight research requirements. So I can't even, you know, skip ahead and buy it. I can't be like, oh, well, I got the XP, why can't I buy it? Well, because I don't have the necessary tech upgrades. As you saw, I only had two out of eight, which... Here we go. I've only updated this two times. One, two. So I'm going to need to upgrade at least six more times. So I'm going to need to get almost all of these done. And I'm not sure if I want to take the jump drive. I do like module reboot because it does reduce the cooldown. It does set back the cooldown direction by a whole heck of a lot. But once I get up to max rewards, I'll be able to unlock the uh, or, or Toronto and then uh, use that. And so that's how that works. That's how research works. Real simple stuff. Um, now you can go into customization. And you have captains here. Unfortunately, customization is really lacking. There's some cool stuff here, like this thermalware or this. But overall, this is about the long and short of it. And you can recolor it in a couple different colors. Um, red, blue, or green. Um, as long as eye color, and then give yourself wear paint or weird tattoos, um, seared bioacids for scars. Um, I can give myself weird hats and berets, um, weird eyeglasses, you know, um, I kind of like that, but again, there's, uh, not a whole lot of... There's no facial feature options, um, which is unfortunate. Uh, hopefully, like I said, this game just came out of the beta. Hopefully they'll add more in as time goes on. Uh, let's go back to the hangar. There we go. <clears throat> and here, let's talk about appearance of our ships, which is really the important part. You always hear your captain at the end of the end of the match. Okay. Now, what's nice about this is that, uh, you can alter the appearance of you got basically four things you can do. You've got the coating, which is a coloring, like cold steel cryometer. It's also cool. Dragon blue, empire gray, that green, blue. I'm actually going to change it to Jupiter Arms because I think that looks a little bit better. Makes the yeah, it really makes the pattern stand out a little bit more. All right, and then you have a pattern, uh, Macura Festivus, you know, for the rest of us, and digital camo. Uh, I like the Mac the the Macura because it's cool and it's got fun wolf designs and stuff like that. Okay. And then the emblems, which you can put on the bow, uh, Angel of Justice, uh, Givra, the Viking, and a bear. Uh, I went with the wolf, because, yeah, they're cool. And then the last one is the decal on the bow. Um, you can paint Phoenix, Droline, whatever the heck that thing is. That is a ugh, weird looking dude. Uh, these guys, and then the Bounty Hunter Guild. 
I went with, yeah, well, at this point, we kind of know why. But what's interesting is if you're like, oh, gosh, I really love the way my old Tier 1 cruiser looked. Oh, I can do that. Oh, look, look at that. I can do that. I can go back to the old Tier 1 cruiser. I can set the bow to look like the old Tier 1 cruiser. So I can actually make this ship appear as that it, as though it's a, a, a Tier 1 cruiser, which is nice for, well, destroyer, for a couple different reasons. And it's nice because, one, if you really like the look of a specific class, and you're playing along that same tech tree, so if you're staying with Jupiter Arms as your ship manufacturer, and you get all the way to the top, you can still have it look like a Tier 1 like the original uh, Augustus class destroyers. Uh, I like the failure. I think I, I love the bridge. Um, but, you know, if you wanted to go back to the older, the, the smaller bridge, that's cool. You know, the smaller engine assemblies. Um, personally, I like the Falgar. I like the, the beefiness of it. Um, so I'm going to leave it the way it is. But it is nice that they do give you that option there. I really do like that. Um, so that customization is all taken care of. And let's go ahead and jump into a match. Spinning up the nav beacon. Thank you, Bix. Uh, that's, by the way, the guy who's running the station, or he's basically your tutorial guy. Um, he will constantly tell you what's going on, keep everything up to date. Also, I love the graphics in here. I love the lighting. Um, just you can see different ships out there in the background. Oh, preparing for battle. Alright, and this is Red Sense. I haven't played this one yet. Uh, and it's an onslaught. Basically, blow up the command ship. Um, all ships, you know, you basically gotta kill the guys. You wanna kill certain ones. Command ships are the highest amount of points. Um, first team with 300, as you can see. Um, there's fighters, which, quite frankly, I hardly ever run into. Assault ships, which I do run into a bit more. Command ships, there's only one of each. And players, which you'll see the most of. And this is also nice where everyone kind of warps in and you can see their, see what class of the ships. Alright, now I'm going to go with my ship, the Fenrir. I'm ready up. And looks like... who do we got? Um, okay, it's me and looks like one other person here. Now these all guys are all bots. You, I've been in enough matches to know these are all bots. But I am also going against a single other guy who's also picked a Tier 2 Destroyer. And here we go. Zoop. Enemy command ship detected. Let's and we're action. off. Attention all ships. Destroy all enemy vessels. Good hunting, captains. Alright. And as a destroyer, you want to get low, stay low. You do not have the armor for larger dreadnoughts, so you want to get as close in range as possible without getting outside of the, uh, the target area. That's bad juju. You get too far out of formation, and you will be punished for it. Just around here. Firing torpedoes. Oh, it's all oh, power to shields. Scrap, 
set, Captain. All the guns fired up. There we go. Gotcha. See what I mean about staying in formation? That guy didn't stay in formation. He kind of wanted to be a hero. Got out of formation. And I pulled back far enough for my associates to take him. Help me out. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and put shields up. See if I can't get back to your friendly lines. Torpedoes have solid lock. Like Kurtz, how they work. There we go. Swapping to primary weapons, Captain. All silos launch missiles. Missiles firing torpedoes. There we go. As you can see, these guys cannot take a whole lot of damage. Scrapped an artillery cruiser. But as you can see, they also took out one of our crews. Power to shields, gonna do something stupid. Torpedoes away. Fusion reactor is overheating. Put the energy system offline. Firing missiles. You got him, Captain. Missile silos reloading, Captain. Alright. Fire, get the fire. There we go. Alright. Alright. Uh, there we go. I want to hit these guys hard. Enemy has a lock. I launch torpedoes. Tired of shields. That's one down. Gonna go ahead and drop. I'll we'll take on this man ship here. Maximum points. Torpedoes away. Missiles away. Full power to weapons. There we go. Torpedoes away. Lots of love to get close to that guy. That would probably be a bad idea. There we go. Not dead, not long range. Come on, get a little closer. Okay, you got shields up. Knock your shields down. There we go. We have missile lock. They're all clumped up in there. That is not good. Ain't gonna cut it, we're gonna have to get it close. Aha! Here you go. Enemy missiles incoming, Captain. Engage shields. Come on. Torpedoes away. Ship is damaged, Captain. 
I'm done. And I can change my ship now if I want, now that I'm dead. Go aboard. And warping back in. By itself, you gotta be kidding me. Get him, 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 ha ha! All right. Now I need to get way the heck back to my fleet because I am overexposed out here. I think someone's shooting at me. Oh! Yeah, those red knots are not making it easy to close in on any ships there. Look, the mint ship's going right into the mouth of that. Who the 
ain't hit me so long. Woo! And that's a win! There's the XP, free XP, and earned credits. But we got a win booster! Woo! There we go. And that's a game. And then we're going to go and spend those upgrade points for fun and profit. Whenever this gets done loading. Alright. So... Now that we've seen that, we're going to check something else here. Career progression. Which, because this is a free game, so there are microtransactions. But, what you also have is stuff you can earn for enemy ships destroyed, onslaught matches, different matches played. Uh, and as you do that, you get, you see here, you know, you can get gold, which is the premium currency. The credits, which are the in-game currency. So we're going to claim that. And close that out. You also got these contracts, which are complete battles, and you'll get uh, credits and stuff like that. <clears throat> Alright. So we're going to go ahead and go here. Load out. Go to research. Module reboot. Yeah, we'll both boost with three credits. Go. And there we go. And that's really good because we noticed that takes it down to 50 second cooldown reduction up from 40. And these all have cooldowns of 20 seconds and 55 seconds. So I'm pretty much, I can almost, I can definitely fire my torpedoes again immediately and I can fire my missiles again after only a 5 second cooldown. Which is good because when you die, so if you're in a real pinch and you use the module booster, you can actually survive, you can actually kill whoever's trying to take you down if you're, if you're lucky. Because missiles don't despawn upon your death. Alright. And this is where you get the in-game currency. As you can see here, it's got this sort of stuff. You can customi customize your appearance. Uh, the Viking Emblem Champion Set, once that loads in, whatever it feels like it. Again, not a whole lot, but this game did just release. Hopefully, you know, in the future they'll release more, like, hair. Hair would be nice, hairstyles. Um, the Winter's Arrival Gear Bundle, this is, you know, how that looks. Got that cool kind of face, uh, face covering sort of thing. Here we go. Reaper Emblem, Bun Bun, uh, all this sort of good stuff. And as I said, you can get the hero ships, and get more XP per battle. But you can also upgrade all these other stuff to to the uh, upgrade your your traditional cruisers. I haven't had any problems yet running into these guys. I'm sure if somebody you know I went up against a full group of you know ten of these guys, yeah, I'm pretty sure they kicked my butt. But so far that hasn't become a problem yet. But it's something to watch out for. Yeah, as far as I know, the, the, the weapons still do the same amount of damage, still got the same amount of hit points, that sort of thing. Uh, just, you do get more XP faster. But that is that. That is pretty much the entire game. Uh, and, uh, there you go. Alright, well, thank you so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video. 
Bye-bye.